Thanks a lot, Matthew, and thank you for all the organization. It's an amazing workshop. So, um, yeah, linear algebra frameworks and RASFL solution of PDEs. This is a linear algebra backend that we are developing to underlie essentially all of our developments in Rust in, in the area of PDE service at the moment. Uh, and this is supported by um, UKI grant as part of the Excalibur theme. So, um, so just very briefly, uh, the Rust scientific computing ecosystem, I'm not going to go into details of the overview talk. I just want to briefly show the linear algebra category. We already have two wonderful packages. We've got ND array, which is multi-dimensional array type, and we've got an algebra, which is very complete linear algebra package uh, with LAPIC bindings. So uh, why actually are we going down the rabbit hole and are doing another linear algebra package? So our vision essentially is to uh, create something where core array structures are available for heap and stack allocated arrays with the same support, same syntax, same interface. And that's important for us because sometimes we use very large dynamical arrays, but also very often we've got small arrays inside hot loops, for example, finite element assembly. We want as much done during compile time as possible. We very much look at Eigen in C++. Uh, users should actually explicitly know when memory allocation is happening. That's very important for a lot of our applications. We, we don't want memory allocation inside hot loops. We want to be certain what operations are doing in terms of memory allocation. Lots of lazy compile time evaluation. So I'm going to come to that. Uh, we are bidding on support for MPI operators, iterative solvers, and we're looking to Petsy. And uh, support for GPUs, where possible and useful. Uh, we've got some very first steps and some some early support for metal arrays. Why metal? Because we are developing on Apple laptops. So, uh, yeah, let, let's just briefly show it off. And I just want to say I'm really giving a super quick overview. Tomorrow we are going to have a very extensive tutorial about functionality and, and design principles, and hopefully some good discussions about how how one should design linear algebra libraries in Rust. So. Um, Essentially, an array type for us is something super simple. An array type doesn't have very much. Uh, it's a struct array. And this struct array is essentially really just an interface to an array implementation type, which can be anything. The only two things it needs to support the array implementation type needs to support an unsafe random access by value. Uh, why unsafe? Because we build our safe traits on top of this. And uh, it also needs to support a shape. So, and uh, from unsafe random access plus a shape, one can automatically implement a safe uh, random access by simply checking the, the shape so, so the user doesn't have to do this. That's all basic functionality that's required and anything can come with this. So um, how does it then work? So let, let's get to something complex and to, to a bunch of complex types. Um, for example, in the first box on the top here, you see something which is array one plus array two, or more precisely, array one dot view plus array two dot view. Why this dot view? Essentially, that's our way of saying that that's a reference to an array. We are always passing over to our methods. We are always moving over actual types. So if you move the array itself over into the plus operation, you lose access to it. That's why we create a view, which is essentially a reference object. And then the outcome is an array three which is an array that is made out, out of an array addition object, uh, which itself takes the array views to two other objects. No actual addition is actually being done at this point. So, so this is all creation of new objects, holding references to other views. How do we actually now add these two things? Well, we create a new array, memory allocation always explicit. We don't want to say, let array three equals array one plus array two, and then in the background, some automatic allocation is done. Array uh, allocation is always explicit. We say, uh, we create a new reside array, and then we fill it up. So you see it at the bottom right, uh, rest.fill from array three dot view, which then runs through a loop and, and fits up uh, the result into the rest. Uh, one can also do a chunked. Uh, there, this is still experimental, but we're working on providing nice and deep support through this, and you can give it the chunk size. Uh, here is 31, that's just from unit tests and practice and maybe obviously something for it, depending on, on CD relation type. But uh, this is then for, for optimized success. And with this, you can build up very complex structures. For example, you can say five times every one plus three times every two and so on and so on. 
And whenever you evaluate the whole chain, it's just a single for loop that is being passed through. Okay. So we've got lots of different types of accessors to, to arrays. Uh, so random access by failure, random access reference, mutable random access, raw access to underlying memory, obviously as well for, for XR LAPIC stuff and so on. Uh, we've got a very complex trait system bit on this, and the trait system guarantees that access is only available for types where they make sense. For example, with the example we had before, this array three, which is array one plus array two, it actually doesn't have memory underneath because it's just a pointer to two arrays, which says, okay, eventually add the two arrays up. Uh, so it doesn't support the raw access trait. And, and with this, you build, can build up a com complex structure that a compile time already sees what, what is possible, what is not possible. Uh, heap and versus stack allocation, we, we have both. Um, the easiest thing is with our macro RSD dynamic array, uh, you, you can give it uh, the type and then the shape. Here is a two-dimensional array, but we, we support arbitrary and dimensional arrays. So uh, you can do one times two, three, can be five dimension, whatever you like. Or you can do the whole thing as well on the stack. We've got a macro RSD static array, F64, 5.4, would then be a stack base array. How is the stack base array created? We are actually, this the second thing is actually a prop macro that is in the background, is creating a bit of piece of code that uses a compile size array as a data compiled, compiler with a fixed Required space of 20 equals five times four elements. So, so that's that's the source behind this. I'm not going to go into the problem of course here. Uh, slicing, we've got a quite complex slicing structure. For example, I, I can take a three-dimensional area, I can create a slice so that the result is a two-dimensional area, supports two-dimensional indexing, and so on. All of this done, the indexing uh, then uh, is actually essentially as compile time, it's then a two-dimensional array type. So we have a three-dimensional array type with, two, with a slice. And then the result is a two dimension every time. So all of this is done actually on the level of data types, not on the not on the level of runtime. Uh, we've got lots of functions implemented already. So we've got support for AU, QR, SVD, or through LAPEC interfaces. We've got number of complex iterator constructs to access parts of matrices, subviews on blocks of matrices, plus your matrix products. We've got early support for matrix features, although it's a bit experimental. We still figuring out how, how should a good GPU interface look like. Uh, we do default compilation with Accelerate on Mac and system lib class lib -lapic on Linux, but one can also declare arbitrary class lib -lapic. Now sparse matrices is also supported, basic support for this. We've got CSR and CSE, CSC matrices, standard support, and we have implemented an interface to OMFPAC, so I can actually do sparse matrix system source. So you see this in the second block, it says sparse matrix dot into you under solve and then OMFAP, and uh, that internally it just, just calls into OMFAC to, to solve this. Uh, support already is there for multiple nodes by MPI, so you can send a sparse array, you can send it around in your cluster to a distributed matrix sector product. So that's, that's already working, but it's not, well, it's uh, parts of this are still in development, but but this basic functionality is there on the MPI side. Uh, one nice feature is uh, the feature of linear function spaces uh, for to implement iterative solvers. We we have created essentially an abstract operator interface. So for for this, we have a linear space uh, trait, which is a very fundamental linear function space represents this, and this can be specialized, for example, as an inner product space or norm space and so on and so on. And if I have an inner product space, this automatically also implements a norm space trait because an inner product gives us a norm. So, so we have this mathematical uh, features, we, we have this for our traits representation. And with this, we can do some cool stuff because we have abstract operators acting on them. So an abstract operator is any kind of linear operator with domain with a domain and a range and you can add it, can multiply it, and then can be specialized as something that supports matrix sector uh, operator times times uh, times elements of the vector space and so on, the usual operator things. So here, for example, the CSS apply trait that then supports an apply for this within this function space from the domain function space to the range function space. And then one can do cool things about this. Uh, like, for example, implement iter iterative service. Here's, for example, the uh, interface with CG iteration. And uh, the CG iteration is implemented for anything that supports a generic trait. 
we have default implementation for, for dense matrices, sparse matrices, but you can do some kind of polynomial function space and the differential operator acting on those polynomials and then run CG on that. No problem with this. So it's all on the abstract interface or just using function space concepts. And for CG, for example, you just need an inner product space act mapping from itself to itself. And that's what the trait actually says as apply uh, domain equal space, range equal space maps to itself and spaces in your product space and then your CG on them. So this, this is all that works. Here's uh, running CG. So you can just run CG. You can set a callable for this and just all the usual stuff that's already solved there. So the status of R RSC, RSC is pretty early. So um, what I've shown you, that's something we consider stable. Actually, we, we just put out a 0.2 version with lots of SIMT work by Sarah Kasadi. Uh, tomorrow in the tutorial, I'm showing you some, some work development within uh, the space of SIMT. Um, most development happens along our other uh, PDE boundary element frameworks tools, about which there will be some talks in the next two days. It's a good testing platform, but obviously you have to show that we are gen generic papers on all in preparation. Uh, thanks a lot for the time and happy to answer questions. Um, thank you, Timo. Um, another really nice talk. Um, so we have some hype coming in through chat and we've had a couple of questions. In fact, one question coming, one for the previous speaker. Um, so anyone, if you want to keep typing questions away, but I'll ask you the one that's there. Um, so the question says, um, can your trait system handle composing structured arrays over different operations? Um, for example, if you add a tri diagonal matrix to a diagonal matrix, um, would it give back a tridiagonal matrix? Uh, that's a good question. We we don't have specific tridiagonal trait yet, yet. So so the default uh layout for matrices that we have implemented at the moment is is a standard color major layout. Although uh, we actually support internally, we support arbitrary layouts as a layout trait and, and you can put in arbitrary layouts. So in that sense, in fun fundamentally it is possible to create a, a tridiagonal matrix layout features haven't done it yet. Okay, 